Hey everyone and welcome to group break number 154. Today we have the Hockey Card Day in Canada special. We got two hobby boxes of extended series, uh, one hobby box of series one uh, from this year and series two from this year and then we got uh, 1920 Ice and Chronology and I mean you can see the big box in the background uh, with 2020, 2021 SP Game Used, Artifact Trilogy, SPX and then we're gonna end the break obviously on the cup because I mean you gotta. So uh, super fun break, kind of been, you know, holding on to that tin of the cup for a little bit for a special occasion, and Hockey Card Day seems like a really good day for it, so, um, yeah, without further ado, let's get underway into the Team Random, good luck everyone, oh, just draft, or preamble, again, Artifacts, Rookie Redemptions will go to the team on the checklist, and then Chronology, the XRCs aren't live, so they will be random between all 31 teams if we have, if we happen to get one, we haven't pulled one yet, so, I mean, in one sense, we're kind of due, and in the other sense, we are, uh, I don't know, well, we might get one eventually, so here we go. Well, let's get the random, three times on the names, three times on the teams, who you line up with is who you get. Once, twice, and third time. Yeah, I've been, I've been looking forward to this break. Uh, just a fun mix. It's little bit of everything you got your studies in uh series one series two they have been assigned uh okay let me uh they're not updated on cardboard connection i'll check after but three times on the teams once twice third time i normally just go by cardboard connection on them so um if they did they would have recently got assigned i'll check that after uh bill if you've got a link just uh, drop it to me, but I just checked quickly and I didn't see any update. So, uh, Brennan, you've got the Capitals. Maxime, you've got the Avalanche. Here's helping in the cup. Uh, Owen with the Sharks. Brent with the Yotes. Randy with Vegas. Edward with the Jets. Bill, you've got the Canucks. Again, good luck in the cup. Edward with the Sabres. Er, Sabres. James with the Senders. Uh, Brayden, you've got the Wild. Ken with Columbus. Mike with the Flames. Maxime with Chicago. Alex with the Philadelphia Flyers. Mark, you've got the Leafs. Blake, you've got the Bruins. So, I mean, lots of history there. Uh, Brooks with the Islanders. Braden, you've got the Lightning. Brendan with the Penguins. Uh, Ethan with Detroit. The Pack Crackers, you have the Habs. That's a pretty solid team. Kevin with the Predators. Bill with the Blues. Kevin with the Stars. Jared, you've got the Oilers. David with the Rangers. James with the Hurricanes. Lindsay with the Kings. Colin with the Panthers. Justin with the Devils. And Robert with the Ducks. Uh, Bill, I, it has to, like, it has to be an officially released checklist just because, um, it's, it's hard to, like, just show people if they don't have a checklist out there. Um, I don't know if Upper Decks announced them somewhere, but, uh, if they have, like, yeah. Uh... Let's see where it is. But yeah, like it, it, uh, ah, uh, Kings actually aren't, uh, aren't the worst. You've got a couple rookies and like 2020, 2021, you're fairly solid. Uh, they're the best in extended, like by far. Um, Bill, oh yeah, I'll, sorry, let me get the team list over. I forgot to uh, get that set up here. Uh, Bill, I think for now, again, it, it's got to be something that I can link to, unfortunately. Like, um, I wish, I wish it was, the kind of general sense is that if it's not a publicly posted checklist yet, it's tough to like point to it. Um, as, again, as much as like the screenshots probably fine it's um like just if something were to ever change then that'd be a little bit frustrating right so um there we go but like if i'm guessing it is probably going to be like laugh kaprizov and stutzla so 
but in probably in that order, but who knows? Um, like again, that that's what I would guess. It's just the checklist isn't there, so like it's it's not posted anywhere. Um, so like. I can't, like, we can't, like, definitively just point to one, unfortunately, and be like, yeah, that, that is going to be it when it's not posted publicly. Like, I can't redirect people to there. And that, that's the biggest thing, right, is that I need to have a place where I can redirect people. Because, like, we've speculated that those are probably who they're going to be forever, so. But, unless they're live. If they're live, like, if people actually have them in hand, that's a different story. Um, because they're not live, yeah, so, hey, J Train. yeah, it's, it's just one of those really weird cases where, like, I think everyone knows who they're gonna be, it's just, yeah. Uh, I'm not surprised that Wallstead slid far, I think, I think there's this real, like, thing with, uh, hockey drafts, or hockey in general, um, with drafts where, like, Teams are kind of get so focused on their guy that once a player starts sliding, they're just like, well, like we could take it, but like we could take him and we want to take him, but at the same time, it's like, um, you know, it's not fully, uh, what should we call it? Like it's outside of who we actually wanted to take. So like, you know, we're going to go with our guy. I, I like Costa a lot. I mean, Walston looks like he's a pretty good goalie as well. So both look like they're good, good goalie prospects. But the draft was uh, interesting. So, all right. A couple more seconds for trades, and then we will get started. But very interesting draft. Obviously, lots of trades surrounding it. Um, lots of defensemen getting traded for a lot. I mean, the Canucks Yotes trade is going to to find Jim Bar Jim Benning's era in uh in Vancouver. So Garland's a great ad. I mean, I'm a massive OEL fan. It's just the downside of being a massive OEL fan and following him is following his play over the past few years and knowing that uh his level of play's gone down a lot. Uh, whether that's circumstantial or whether it is, you know, just kind of, you know, things players generally get worse as they get older like you know it could be one or the other but yeah garland garland is very good like very very good and he shouldn't be super expensive so all right it is 13 15 let's get started uh i like very very good player uh like great pickup um again like Ditching the salary is great. Like I, I honestly, I would have rather they just straight up traded Garland for ninth overall. Like Garland for ninth in the second. Honestly, I would have rather them do that. And again, this is as one of the biggest Oliver Ekman Larson uh, fans out there. Like signed jerseys. My first ever hockey card collection was Oliver Ekman Larson. Um, actually, like I moved some of my cards to a friend who is also collecting them, and they, they uh. Like, some of the rarer stuff from, like, his Dominion Rookie Patch Autos. Um, so, like, was barely into collecting him and, like, followed him a lot. But it's just, you know, I hope he bounces back. His radio interview today, very good. Um, you know, and lots of accountability there, saying, like, he needs to play better. And he, he does. And, I mean, you can never fault him for what he's getting paid. But at the same time, like, he's definitely not playing at the level that he needs to be for his contract. All right. Starting off with a Shemalevsky for the Sharks on the Young Guns. Uh, and a reminder, the All-Star Game cards in this, because it's a specific All-Star Game, will go to uh, the team that they're kind of pictured that's on their jersey, because that's the team that they were at for that All-Star Game. So, All right, here we go. Got a rookie class. That, that That's the right rookie class to get. Nice little laugh out of the gate for the Rangers. But yeah, I hope OEL can bounce back. Um... From everything that I've heard, terrific person, uh, you know, and like lots of character. I think he like, you know, you talk about locker room and culture stuff and like there's value to that. Um, it's just, you, you know, his contract's very expensive. Um, Keandre Miller 
for the Rangers. And the long term, like the six years left at that, like especially given his play over the past, especially the past like three to four years, like he has dropped off. Um, the past couple of years, he hasn't been good. Uh, last year in particular, McDavid for the Oilers on the 0506. That's a really nice looking card. Um, but like he, uh, like he hasn't been good in last year. I know like um, there are a few good articles out there about how like Chikrin, who I love and wish the Canucks took over Yolevi uh, back in that draft. I mean, I wish they took Sergachev, but they wanted the ready defenseman. I said Chikrin, so Crosby for the Penguins on the ultimate victory. But like Chikrin kind of just became the number one and posted up uh, better results than Ekman Larson did in the same role the previous year. Ekman Larson was in a more sheltered role and just wasn't quite at the same level, so. Uh, laugh for the Rangers. So, lots of laughs to start off. But yeah, it is, it's torn. I'm torn on, uh, like, if this was 2015, I would be ecstatic. I mean, like, I have an Oliver Ekman Larson signed jersey. I have a lot of Ekman Larson cards. Um, it's just, it's, it's not 2015 anymore, right? So, uh, Ian Mitchell for Chicago on the victory rookie. So, uh, and like, I think, you know, as much as people can say they offloaded three bad, Ooh, we got something spicy. Oh no. It's one of the future impacts, the UD3s, right? Well, Keandre Miller for the Rangers, uh, that is two 1000. Yep. Numbered one seven, seven of 1000. Yeah. Yeah. The knee. And then just, I mean, again, like general aging curves for players like once they hit um you know once you hit 27 28 you slow down a bit like you do slow down so you you not necessarily slow down but you don't improve but you, you can slow down at that age and like kind of once you're once players hit 30 you know it's there's lots of data on it that they do start to this is a little chunk out of it Got him for Chicago, or Calgary, sorry. Uh, he's got like an indent on the uh, side there. So I'm trying to see. Yeah, it's, I think you can see it. Yeah, right there, If I especially if I put it like, there you can kind of see it, just a little soft spot on the edge. So I, I hope he bounces back. One of the things that like intrigued me about his interview was that he needed to be better at distributing the puck. He kind of got away from that. And that is one of the biggest things that was pointed out in a lot of articles is that uh, Pasternak for the Bruins, is that he wasn't moving the puck as, as much. He was kind of dumping it, chipping it out, rather than making, you know, good passes or, you know, controlled exits and stuff like that. So um, he's aware of that, which is really, really good, because if that's one of the big areas that he can improve in, that'll be great. Foot for the Devils, because, like, that's probably one of the best ways for him to get back. And also, I think if he's used in a little bit more of a sheltered role, like, the thing that scares me is that the Canucks are going to use him in that number one role. And, like, I I don't think you can anymore. Uh, that's that's bizarre. Hollow French variation right after the regular one. Uh, so, like, I, I don't know if you can fully use him in that role. Um, it does take a little bit of pressure off Hughes, but so will Rathbone. Rathbone's pretty good. So, uh, hand mark for the Sharks. So, I... I like the trade from the Coyotes' perspective, too, because they didn't have a first-round pick this year. Um, and, you know, it didn't... Like, Garland doesn't fit in their long-term plans, and the Ekman-Larsen contract will be tough to get rid of, so... Uh, it's just a good fit there, I think. Uh, Dylan Cousins for the Sabres. So, they're essentially paying Garland to get rid of OEL, and then ninth overall to take on the three bad contracts, and the second and the seventh as well. Um... And from a Arizona standpoint, that's a really good deal. Because, like, if Ekman Larson doesn't bounce back, like, it's going to cost a lot more to move him, or you're going to have to buy him out, and that buyout's not exactly great. So, uh, Zabanjad for the Rangers. But the most surprising, like, the it's really weird because we had three absolutely monster trades, and then one that was a fairly big trade that went under the radar. Uh-oh. You see that name in the uh, 
the um, umula, I think. There we go. There's a Stutz Love Retro Young Gun for the Senators. That's a good start. Um, but yeah, like you you see all the names, then you see, you know, the Pavel Bushnevich trade as a heck of a deal for the Blues. Bushnevich is a very, 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 very good forward. Like, legitimate first line forward. And he went for a second round pick and, like, a depth player. Like, realistically, a bottom six forward. And I, like, I think, you know, again, rather than trade ninth overall for Garland, I probably would have rather done that deal. But, uh, base pack here. But, yeah, and then you have, I mean, the Seth Jones trade is just, that one's interesting. I mean, I think Chicago, or not Chicago, um, Columbus made out really well on there. Uh, Stu's left for the centers. A little bit of a soft edge on that one. Soft left corner. Lots of really good rookies in this box. Uh, and, like, even, like, just hitting the right names. But, yeah. Like, that contract for Seth Jones is scary. Um, I like Boquist as a defender. The pick capital they got, that, um, the 2022 first is a really big get. So. I forgot if it's lottery protected or not, but. Uh, Pavelski for the stars, but if it is lottery protected, like that also might be a benefit because if it bumps back into 2023 where you've got Bedard and uh, Mitchkoff, uh, and it's not lottery protected, then like you know, oh, oh, this could be big. Oh, oh, yeah, that's a that's a gold life rookie class to 75 for the Rangers. Laugh Gold Rookie Class to 75 for the Rangers. This is the best box of extended we've opened. Like, hands down. Uh, I mean, a laugh to 75? A Stutzla Retro Young Gun? Yep. Yep. Yeah, can't complain. We hit a Crosby insert and a... Um, we hit the Crosby insert, the... Uh, McDavid insert, so like we're hitting the right names. Two laughs in two laugh inserts. Um with the out of seventy five there. I mean the future impact of Miller, the Stutzla insert, like I mean our other rookie class was cousins. Our young guns aren't horrible. So heck of a uh heck of a start here. Reese Johnson for Chicago. But I mean, you know, starting off with a laugh out of 75, yeah, take that every single day of the week. Rangers are definitely one of the teams that you want to have just between both of the years of all the products. So, uh, to bring cap for Chicago. But yeah, and then there's the the other interesting trade was the Ristolainen to Philadelphia. Uh, that one I'm really interested in seeing just how Ristolainen does in a place not named Buffalo, because uh, like he does have like in fairness he has a lot of skill. I don't think that skill is worth the first in, like, uh, letting him for the Leafs. I don't think that first is worth the, uh, the gamble of a, uh, or I don't think Ristolainen is worth the gamble of a first and a third, plus what they had to move out to get rid of, uh, Gostas Bear. Like, I think Gostas Bear is every bit actually as good as Ristolainen, um, but we don't know yet. Oh my goodness, what a box. Uh, finite spectrum of Carter Hart for the Flyers to 299, so... A uh, heck of a good box. A little bit of chipping on the side. But, yeah. Uh, three numbered cards. One of the best uh, retro young guns you can hit. I mean, literally one of the best rookie classes that you can hit in the parallels. Zero complaints here. Heck of a start. All right, uh, I'll throw up the team viewer here. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm intrigued to see how that trade plays out as well. Um, obviously, one of the uh, Bristol Lions, one of the biggest, like, I wouldn't say controversial players, but like debated players because he's a player that, like, if you watch him play hockey and, like, you see, just see him skate and stuff, uh, like, just 
not focusing on anything else than like the level of talent he has like he has a lot of talent like he's a smooth skater he can stick handle fairly well um you know like that's good he's got a decent shot but the problem is that like you know it seems like there's a lot of defensive awareness and whether that was just being put in a lot of pressure in buffalo which could be a thing you know uh, like he, he was playing half a game in buffalo and you know it's one of those weird things where he was playing half a game in Buffalo and Buffalo was bad. So, like, he's probably more of a cause to it than a solution. Ooh, nice. Reflections to 500 of Matt Barzell. But, like, you just... Sometimes you just don't know. So, I wish he would have got out of Buffalo a couple years ago. Just because, you know, we could actually see him, like, maybe have a couple years under a different system and maybe that would help. I mean, same goes for Rasmus Dahlin right now. I'd like to see him outside of Buffalo, but we'll see. Uh, Callum Booth on the Young Guns for the Brutes. That was exciting. Um, in terms of, like, all the transactions, I mean, no Eichel trade yet. And then, oh, yeah, Sam Reinhart to Florida is also another, I think, a solid trade. Jack Hughes for the Devils. I think that's a pretty solid trade uh, for both sides. Reinhardt wasn't going to be back, and it was very apparent that he was not going to be back and pretty sour about how things were handled in Buffalo. So they got a lot of rebuilding to do there. Bear ban off for the Leafs on the ultimate victory. Like, they've got to build a lot of trust in their players now. They've got to sell them on everything. And, like, they've, they've essentially gone from a rebuild into another rebuild because they have to. Like, they legitimately have to rebuild at this point again because they just didn't do a good job last time. Uh, Puy Suter for Chicago on the holographics. A little bit of a soft corner, but that's a fairly common thing. And I'd say the biggest area of fault for the Sabres was... I mean, people point to rushing draft picks, but I think it's just poor drafting. Like, outside of their first overall picks and second overall picks, they didn't do great. Uh, bunting for the Coyotes. A little bit of a soft left edge on that one. Again, uh, not the worst. It's just noticeable kind of by the upper deck logo in the top left. Right about, you can kind of see it on the camera right about there. But, but yeah, be interesting to see how things shake out there. Uh, another reflections here. A little Larkin for the Red Wings. I I hope for uh, for everyone that made a transaction that like again all the players live up to their expectations and everything goes well but we'll see so holtz for the kings he got traded i think as well to uh arizona i believe it was him and i forget who else for steenbergen and Braden burke Braden burke is in series two uh aho for the hurricanes on the 0506 and other kind of big questions are where will Dougie Hamilton sign? Where will Jack Eichel end up going? How are his medical records? Uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting. I believe this is a base pack, yep. Because the McDavid is not a variation, Anderson is not a variation, and there is nothing else there. We got a gold coming up here. Uh, Puish Suter for Chicago. Uh, actually, it's just Puish Suter. Uh, again, same thing as the other holographics. Actually, this one has... Uh, no, it's just the foiling. It just looks like there's like a little bit of a crease in the top, but I think it's just the foiling. But same thing as the other holographics. The left kind of corner, the bottom left corner is rough. But yeah, let me know what your thoughts were on the uh, draft day, kind of expansion draft. Um, I mean talked about the expansion draft last time but stanley for the jets i think everything went pretty smoothly the the draft dragged on for a long time like eight to three is just that's too long they got to figure out how to shorten that up i mean it helps when your people have flights but uh paid in crabs for the uh vegas gold knights this one has a like ding in the bottom right like just I don't know how else to describe it. It's like just kind of pushed forward. So, just as a heads up. Oh yeah, you can you can definitely see it more. Right. Yeah, you can see it right kind of there. Uh, 
I think long term Canucks are gonna be, you know, probably a little bit worse for wear with the OEL contract, but we'll see. They've they've gotta move Schmidt out. Like they they legitimately have to at this point. Uh, Norris for the Senators. If not this year, then next year, just because right now their contracts on defense in 2023-24 and like you have to start looking at that uh, like that on that a long of a term because you've got a plan for that because that's when like pd hoaglander hughes i mean hughes might not be with the team by then but um ian mitchell for chicago on the retro young guns but like you, you got to start planning for that when your players are like 100% in their prime so you can have the cap space to allocate it. And they have like uh, like 20 million or so tied up to, uh, who is it? It's uh, Schmidt, Ekman Larson, and Tyler Myers in that year on defense. And like, honestly, at that point in time, that's going to be three bottom pairing defensemen. Uh, Bischoff for Vegas? Like just based off of like how they've been playing lately and kind of where they kind of project to in their age at that time like you're you're probably gonna have you know two bottom six defensemen and you know maybe one that's kind of a seventh defenseman at that price tag and that's not great uh finite of parisi for the wild uh, is two eight three five two nine 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 so i think like their only forward under contract at that point is uh I think Podkosin will be under contract, and then uh, Eric Stahl for the Sabres on the clear cut. Podkosin will be under contract, and Pearson? Yeah, Pearson. So, you know, like, if the cap's only 83.5 million, they have 55 million. This pack's really uh, warped here. Rookie class of Ottinger for the Stars. Uh, but if they only have, you know, 55 million left after, like, they've got Demko and those defensemen and Pearson, like, that's really not a lot by the time you factor in PD, Besser, Hoaglander, Hughes, like, that's not a ton of cap space. Smith for the Devils, and that's why, like, you know, you look at their prospect covered, and, I mean, after Pot Colson, there's really, there's not a ton there, so... You know, you kind of need those ELC contracts like Tampa has coming up, you know. They had Point, and now they have, like, Joseph, um, Cernak, a couple of those players, right? That's when you need them to kind of pop up. Varlamov for the Islanders. And so, like, they don't have those players in the system right now. So I, that's kind of where I wish they held onto their draft picks because I think the best scenario would just be, you know, uh, Shemaleski for the Sharks. The best scenario for them would just let all the dead cap expire, like let Beagle, Roussel, Erickson expire at the end of the year. Um, and then, you know, start weaponizing that cap space to get some assets in or get players for cheap, like kind of like what they did with Schmidt. But uh, hurdle on the French variation for the Sharks. But like, Bushnevich is a great example where he only cost a second and like a bottom six forward. Like, if. You know, the Rangers came to the Canucks for like, we want Tyler Mott and a second. You you say yes, then. Uh, you'll love me for the Canucks. I mean, you'd still say yes if they offer that to you right now, but. That's a quieter box. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Quieter box. But then again, the first box was absolutely crazy. So split those over two boxes and we did well. I just gotta reorder these. So that way I'm not digging through them as much. There we go. Series one time. Alright, who are we seeing? I, I'm sensing a Byram. I'm sensing a Byram here. And the day predictions in for what you think we're gonna pull out of the cup.
All right, let's deal with the stickiness. Well, Josh Norris for the centers. That's a good one right out of the gate. Centers had a good break. Like, honestly, like, if the break ended right now for the centers, you'd be happy. You got a Stutzel Retro and a Norris Regular. You take those. Those are, those are wins. Who had Ottawa? Uh, James. One, two, three, four. French variation of Doughty for the Kings. Let's see if we'll have another weird box series one like our last uh, few boxes have. We had that, if you missed it, one of the breaks last week, uh, Blackwood for the Devils on the rookie retrospective. We had a 14 card series one pack with three hits in it. I think it's a young gun, an insert, and a uh, cut components. It was bizarre. So we had 11 base cards. And then there were a bunch of packs that only had like four cards in them. So it was, it was weird. Quinn Hughes for the Canucks on the canvas. Bellows for the Islanders on the rookie portraits. Doc for Chicago on the debut date. His brother got drafted to Chicago as well. Malkin for the Penguins. On the Dazzlers. Velarde for the Kings, not a bad young gun. Again, lots of promise there. He had lots of, lots of rough injuries, but um, if he can kind of get through those, then he... Uh, Got a good shot to be a top six forward, so. Predominant of Kyle Connor for the Jets. Uh, connecting for the Flyers on the portraits. Benson for the Oilers on the Young Guns. Sebastian Ajo for the Hurricanes on the canvas. Wrong pile. There we go. Yeah, Columbus had quite a good weekend. I mean, Arizona had quite a... I'd say Arizona had a solid weekend. Uh, we got a jersey of good drill for the Flames. Good drill for the Flames on the jersey. Colorado, I think, did well, especially with that McCarr extension. I mean, yeah, it's a lot, but legitimately one of the best defensemen in the league, so. Kubelik for Chicago on the debut dates. And I like what they did with the final year. They kind of left it open. There's, I don't know if there's trade protection or not, but. Um, so, like, depending where they are, they can, uh, they can flip them for assets if they really need to, so. Another good young gun coming up here. McMichael for the uh, Capitals. That base card stuck there. There we go. Pretty solid box here. McMichael, uh, Velarde, Norris, Benson as your young guns. You get anyone else in there? Nope, just those ones so far. That's pretty solid. Like, 
No, I mean Norris is pretty good, but Kemper for the Yotes on the portraits. Like no superstars, but a bunch of like really solid prospects. Uh, worldwide of Teravinen for the Hurricanes. I'm curious to see how the rest of the uh, rest of the week and free agency will shake out. I think Seattle is going to be a big spender at free agency. So I I think Jaden Schwartz will end up there for sure. Well, I said we'd see a Byram. So here's a nice little Byram canvas for Colorado. Not what I was you know predicting, but I mean I said Byram Young Gun. So technically right. Not the base, but you'll take the canvas. I think Seattle will end up with like at least Schwartz and probably one or two of the other bigger forwards out there. Quinn Hughes on the pink dazzlers for the Canucks. Defense. It, I, I mean, they've got to make some trades, I think, over the next little bit, but. Bodin for Chicago. Not horrible either, so. Uh, again, not like laugh or a big name, but. You know, you could do worse, so. Shesterkin for the Rangers on the rookie retrospective. Bishop for the Stars. It'd be amazing to go through this uh, actual set now and count how many players have been traded or on our or on different teams at the start of next year. So, and Geeky for the Hurricanes. That's the player who's on a new team. That pack was actually fairly good. I think it's just Geeky that's on a new team. I think at least. And last pack. Really, like, honestly, pretty solid box. Nothing like... The Byram canvas is actually really nice. Uh, the Norris is really nice. I think Byram's going to surprise people in a year or two, so... Uh, Latang for the Penguins, once he gets more playing time, at least. Because that's going to be the big thing, right? Just getting playing time in Colorado. But, uh, our worst young gun was Bodan, and then everyone else in that crop has, like, legit potential, so... All right, last uh, last standard box before we can start to get into the crazy stuff. Not that Series 1 and Series 2 can't be crazy because they can with the laugh. I mean, you know, if we hit a laugh out of 75 from SP, Game Use, SPX, Trilogy, Artifacts, we'd all be pretty stoked. So here we go. Korshkov for the Leafs, and a French variation of Rowney for the Ducks. But yeah, pretty solid so far. You know, each box has had something pretty... Uh, this is weird. They're just backwards, I guess. Yep, they're just backwards. Coles are for Vegas. and Yeah, that's weird. It's double backsham in the same pack. No variation, but just double backsham. Oh yeah, we got we got a fun, funky box here, cause like there's three backwards base cards. Uh, we got Dumba for the Wild on the canvas. You know what I say about weird boxes? Sometimes they're pretty good. That's where stuff gets crazy. Ant Missile for Chicago. Uh, this is all just base.
Yeah, this is weird seeing like flipping over and it's based on the back and front. Retro of Braden Burke for the Yotes, newest member of the LA Kings, I believe. All right, now we're back to normal pack. Ingram for the Predators. Have there been any uh any more trades? Don't think so. Oh, we're back to weird pack. Let's go. Let's get weird. Something weird. Probably just a canvas. Just a canvas of Gensel for the Penguins. Oh, Chris, no longer with his team. <laughs> this pack will be fun. All right. Still with this team. Still with this team. Still with this team. Andre for the Stars. Not with this team. Still with this team. Not with this team. So two out of the... Uh, Eight there. Not with the team, still with the team. Prisky on the retro. And just base on the rest. Uh, Zamula for the Flyers on the blue. Zemgus. Remember all the hype around him, and he just never panned out. McLeod for the Oilers. Lots of players not with their teams in that one. What do we got here? We have Pui Suter for Chicago on the Young Guns. Zara! Is that our second Young Gun or third? I think that's only our second. Unless I put one up here by accident. I think I uh I just put base cards up there by accident. Oops. I don't think we pulled another one, so. Alright, so we should have four on the left side. I mean it's a weird box, so. Cole Smith for the Predator. Soft side there. Got a jersey coming up. Uh, photo shoot flashback materials. These are rare, but one in every two cases, I think. Uh, Farabee for the Flyers. It's a nice rare pull for the Flyers there. Cole Smith was our third, right? Yes. Our fourth is, that's a good one. Cousins for the Sabres. One of the better ones. Again, if he can improve his like in tight game, like his you know close game, his stick handling and stuff like that, and a little bit on the decision making, I think he'll be a real, real good player. Like first liner, if he doesn't, he'll probably still be a second liner. So, cause he's still got like pretty good everything else. You'll love it for the Canucks. It's just like that little bit extra is keeping him from the whole like elite side of things. Makar for the Avs. A few packs to go here. Duncan Keith for Chicago. Now in Edmonton. Actually, a lot of players in that pack were traded. Forsberg for the Predators. You gotta wonder if he's on his way out of Nashville. You know, with all the trades that they've made and the retool that they're doing. McLeod for the Oilers. Right, we've already hit our French variation, so we should have the Dazzlers and other pack, but Retro of Zagadulin for the Flames. This is a weird box. Uh, Wolf for the Lightning. Is that a Vasilevsky on the other side? No, that's Freddie Anderson. I don't know why they just look so similar to me. So you should have... I think we're missing a few young guns here. 
We're missing two. So the last two packs should have young guns in theory. This one does not. It's got a uh, Stuart Skinner for the Oilers and a French variation of Helm for the Red Wings. So. Uh, last pack here. I'm just going to go back through everything because this probably will be a young gun. Yep. Shellman for the Sharks. So. Just going to go back through everything. Make sure I didn't miss anything. Because I think we were missing the Dazzlers pack and like Kind of there's the one pack where you get two cards in it and we never got that. We got one off the top but nothing else, so. Uh, make sure, because it was an upside down box, if the cases that were missing something, I will throw in an overtime pack to be random at the end of the break. Nothing in that. Nothing in here. That is all clean. That looks like it is all good. So there's one last little stack here. Weird box, really weird box. Yeah, I'm not missing anything. Just a weird box, all right. So we're definitely missing a young gun there. At the very least, because we got, right, one, two, three, four, Cousins is five. Um, what do we do on this stuff? We hit, was Dumba Series 1? No, I think it started with the Rowney, right? No, the Korshkov and the Rowney. Correct, correct. So we got one, three, four. So we got one, two, how many canvases? One, two three we got the regular amount of canvases we got an extra french variation so we might get an extra portrait one uh two three four no four uh one two three four five six seven eight. i think we got an extra retro opg maybe i'm not quite sure but definitely like something off so uh, we were missing a young gun that much I do know. Let's see if you get six, so we'll random that off at the end of the break. When you'll get that sealed, shipped to them. Uh, let's do artifacts. So apologies about that. Kind of not much that. Unfortunately, not in our control, but we'll do what we can. So. And just in case I do need that box on the light where it is. O2. O2 and one two six. Six two five six six. Here we go. Left side is normally the numbered stuff, so let's get let's get something. Let's get let's get a black. That'd be really cool. Uh, price to 75 for the Habs. Nice one there. Evans for the Habs. That one is definitely on the miscut side of things, I believe. Just compare it to a regular card. Again, fairly common. Known issue is that these are pretty badly. Yeah, this one's. Honestly, not the worst that I've seen, but, you know, kind of a common thing with those is that they're just miscut. Um, so, mainly the out of 999 ones, the other ones are fine. What do you think our rookie redemption is going to be? I need to call our rookie redemption before we hit it. Dubois for the Blue Jackets, the 299. 
I think our rookie redemption is going to be. I am feeling feeling Winnipeg on it. Feeling like Winnipeg. Leclerc 210 jersey numbered for the uh, Flyers. Nice little jersey numbered Leclerc. That's ah, jersey numbered. We'll throw it in the that pile. Ooh, we got an Autofax. Uh, Soderberg for the Yotes. Not the worst. Not the worst. Not not the best, but not the worst. Here's our rookie redemption. I went with Winnipeg. Who's it going to be? San Jose. Uh, Shemilevsky, if I remember correctly. Where did I put the uh, artifacts checklist? Oops. I don't have that up. I believe that's Shemilevsky, but... If I remember correctly. No, it's Leonard, sorry. John Leonard. Shemilevsky was uh, later in the year, so. So, John Leonard on that. We got a uh, base jersey to 175 of Grubauer for the abs. And last pack. It's like another jersey. It's rookie. Uh, Nick Robertson for the Leafs, not horrible. Not horrible. Again, not who you're hoping to get, but not the worst either. So, kind of just there. So, a uh, relatively weaker box of artifacts, but they all can't be super strong. So, all right, let's do... Let's do Ice. Uh, no, let's do Trilogy, because Ice has bigger... Ice has bigger hit potential. Just with the exquisite and stuff for the RPAs. All right, two packs there. These cards are the two hits, so we'll open up those last. Typically, at least they're the two hits. So, uh, three, seven, five, one, two, six. If you're superstitious like me and choose boxes based off their box numbers. All right, here we go. Lorenz for the Hurricanes. Nothing really notable on damage there. Hagel for Chicago to 999 on the rookie premieres level one. Uh, Alexia, again, a little bit of chipping. These cards are, tend to have some chipping just because they're uh, colored stock on the side, so they chip easier. But Alexia for the Capitals and Bellows for the Islanders to four ninety nine. That four no, it's four oh nine of four ninety nine. We got one of those super stages here. This feels thick. Uh, Benson for the Oilers and Robertson for the Leafs to four ninety or sorry nine ninety nine. Uh, 408, the Bellows was 409, so it's kind of funny. All right. Jason Robertson for the Stars. A little bit of a soft right corner on that one. And Mikey Anderson for the, I'll put that one there. Uh, Mikey Anderson for the Kings to 999 on the Rookie Super Stage Red. So this should be a hit, and then the next pack should be a hit. We have... Uh, Kilenix for Columbus. Put that one there. And Ottinger for the Stars on the rookie rendition jersey. I really like those. And whenever I see Kilenix, it's always sad. You know, just horrible, horrible accident and story. But why not, you know, protected Merzlikens and his, his partner and their kid. So, you know, went out a hero. Uh, Norris for the Senators on the renditions, and oh, that is that is fairly gross. Uh, Ingram to 49 on the rookie renditions patch auto. That is a disgusting patch. Uh, like three color, four break, one, two, three, four, five break. That's pretty, uh, 
pretty sick. So, not the biggest name yet, but he does have pretty good results. Um, so, you know, not the worst one to hold on to either. All right. There's still, I think our, like, that's by far, like, our coolest pull in terms of, like, card coolness. But in terms of, like, overall rarity, it's definitely the laugh. Like, I think that's our best value card so far. Ice time. Uh, four, six, eight. With five, five, five on the front. All right. Same thing here. Box is empty. And bottom two packs to the top because these are Ice Premier's rookies, typically at least. Try sell for the Oilers on the green and to twelve ninety nine. Stenlin for the Blue Jackets. Honestly shocked he's not a member of the Kraken. That's who I had to pick from uh, Columbus. But good player. I will say that out of the twelve ninety nine, it's one of the best ones that you could hit. So, if not the best one out of twelve ninety nine, here we'll move this one to the front as well. Fabro on the sub zero to nine ninety nine for the Predators. Barzell for the Islanders. Ooh, sorry, the dry settle goes up there. Uh, on the green. And to four ninety nine, Dacord, actual member of the Kraken, on the Ice Premier's level three. It feels thick. It's a little bit thicker than normal, so we probably have like a rookie relics would be my guess. This first pack's normally a jersey card. Dalian for the Sabers on the orange, and yep, Cody Glass on the jumbo rookie relics to one ninety nine. Now a member of the Predators. I don't know. I mean, that just needs a sleep in top loader anyways, but uh, we still have some left for breaks. So, still have some left for breaks. This is normally the bonus pack, so sometimes you either get an extra auto or you get like an extra hit or something like that. Quinn Hughes Sub-Zero for the Canucks to $9.99. Nice one there. And Pedersen for the Canucks. And uh, that was all that was in that pack, so we just got an extra Sub-Zero. Right? Yeah. That was all base. But I mean, Hughes on the sub zero is better than uh, some other players, so. We got, a, we got a thick. This is probably exquisite patch auto. It's not a retro. Uh, gets left for the Ducks. Myers? Yeah. Philip Myers to 199 for the Philadelphia Flyers. A uh, little bit. Obviously, the bubbling on the ink is a. Uh, kind of known problem with the exquisite cards they can have it so um funny that our two main hits out of that box are both now members of the uh nashville predators and they were acquired kind of in the same trade <laughs> funny how that works out oh no we're doing chronology next right we're ending on spx we're ending on spx yeah, we still got some ice left over for breaks so um kind of spacing it out because it, it's a really good mixer product because you get like you get 10 cards per box on average um sometimes 11 with there's some big hits that you can get out of it um price point wise it's good for mixers so we'll have we'll have a few uh a few breaks with it coming up as well so i think one one next week i think i'm not don't quote me on that but all right I'll go off the back here. Uh, Giroud, time capsule for the Flyers. So time capsule there. So that, um, who has the Flyers? Flyers is Alex. Alex, uh, if you want to open that up, you can. You can get like a mini card inside of it. But again, leave that up to you. We'll ship it sealed. Uh, Forsberg for the Predators, 222. Whoa, for the Bruins. Oh, man. He's going to hate me. Brad Marchand on the Timeless Memories Canvas Auto. Blake, that is yours. Uh, Blake is a very diehard Canucks fan, by the way. So, um, yeah. And Barrett Jackman for the Blues. So, he is going to... He's going to hate me for that one. But, really nice card. Love him or hate him. He is a very good NHLer. Uh, not numbered on that. 
But honestly, decent, decent box there. Oh, you just tuned back in? <laughs> I mean, hey, with the Bruins getting a hit is, I'd say, pretty good in this mix. So, not, like, not the worst card. Uh, Alex, I just, I need an email for that and kind of would, um... I'll, I'll ship it sealed to you just because you need an email for it and kind of in the middle of the break just to just to 100% confirm the name and stuff. Uh, working on getting that set up though, I think, over the next little bit. I think um, just getting, you know, your either your Twitch username or whatever we do decide to use. So. All right. Uh, 147, so. So yeah, I'll just, I'll leave that up to you. And that way, I mean, you have something to open if you want to, too, so. Here we go. I'm just gonna peek and see where we're gonna uh, go from in here. Um, ugh. Uh, okay, we'll just go front to back. Uh, price for the Habs to 165. That there. I mean, true base to 72 of Bobrovsky for the Panthers, so not a bad one there. Belzeal for the Habs. Obviously, you'd rather have a better name, but uh, the true base to 72. Uh, Belzeal for the Habs on the rookie auto. Ingram for the Predators on the rookie jersey. Regula for Chicago on the rookie jersey. Uh, random between the Senators and Red Wings, Duclair and Bertuzzi on the All-Star Skills Duel. So we'll random that one, because Red Wings is... Who had the Red Wings? Uh, Ethan and Ottawa was James, and then Hedman for the Lightning. So that was a uh, bit of a rougher box that SP Game used. Would have been nice to get a bigger name on the base or one of the rookie inserts, or even the dual jersey, but a bit of a rougher box there. SPX will make it up, right? Uh, yep. I'll throw them up real quickly here. Wow, it's really weird the amount of people like that got... I just realized how many people got them beside themselves. But yeah, that's honestly... Uh, probably the worst box the SP game is you've opened up, so... Like, but again, most of our boxes of SP game use have been very strong, so... Hopefully SPX can turn it around. 709, 169. All right, here we go. Matthews for the Leafs on the base to 299. I, I love the base design in this. Uh, let's take this. I'm just gonna try and save the thick cards for the end. Okay, this is an obsidian. I wish I could, I wish I could open these up without like spoiling the back card, but it's really hard to do. I think we got it. I think we got it. Uh, Calvin Turkoff for the Columbus Blue Jackets to two ninety nine on the rookie auto. Beautiful looking card. Player not the best, but solid. All right, Blake. Stay cool out there. It's a it's a toasty one. Uh, this looks like a shadow box. Or no, that might be a rookie jersey. So we might save that one. We got... I don't know, we got a weird pack here. Let's go with this pack, because that pack's weird. Alright, Kiefer Bell is on the SPX rookie jersey for the Islanders. This pack doesn't have a decoy, so... I think I have to go back to front. Hang on, I gotta get a decoy down because I think gold shadow box is good. I think it's a gold shadow box at the very least. So, uh, Mark Stone to 299. We should have an auto, right? So it should be the shadow box for Vegas. And, ooh, yeah, I'd say a gold shadow box is uh, pretty good for the Montreal Canadiens, the Pack Crackers. Nice little Harry Price shadow box auto to. 125 number 39 of 125 
Honestly, higher numbering than what I thought. Beautiful card. A absolutely gorgeous card. Now, this is the coolest card that we've pulled so far. No disrespect to the Ingram or the Laugh or the Marchand, but that is a beautiful looking card. All right, time for the main event. Good luck, everyone. Let's uh, make some way for the cup because we need all the we need all the space that we can get. Here, so here we go. Yeah, let's see something big. That box SPX pretty solid. The price shadow box is good, and honestly, an extra card. Uh, like our RPA out of RPA out of ninety nine would be really nice as well. Like just something cool, something cool, something weird. That's how I like to go about things. All right, that is good. That is good. Obviously, that's gone there. Something McDavid. All right, tin is empty. Here we go. It's been a while since I've opened up a tin of the cup. It's been a while. All right. So there is obviously empty. We will uh, get this pulled out here. Come on. I'll just rip the foam, I guess, in that case. There we go. All right. Uh, we have a. I want to say we have a button at the back, so. Obviously empty. Uh, so I guess we'll just go top to, we'll go top to bottom because that's a that's a really thick card. So we'll end on that. I'll have to uh, pick up a 360 one touch, I guess, for that. But we do have a button, I think. Here we go, front to back, let's go. Anders Lee for the Islanders. 249 of 249, eBay one of one. For the Detroit Red Wings, Ricky Patch Auto, Ryan Kuffner to 249. That's that's a nice card as well. Wallstrom on the signature materials. Three color patch auto to 99 for the Islanders. Uh Day with the Cup signatures. Tara Vinen for Chicago. Nice one there. But uh not numbered on that. McKinnis for Columbus to 249. On the uh on the rookie patch auto a little bit of spotting on the auto but they think that's just the card texture and well for the calgary flames button auto to three matthew kachuk so probably not the team you had hidden big but hey here we are got the game used fight strap button number to three honestly really cool card like Cool card. The Terravine auto is really cool. The Wallstrom patch auto is solid. I mean, again, is it the strongest box? No, but we really did well at pulling the most hated players. Yeah, most hated players with Mar Marchand and uh, Kachuk. Um, and yeah, we got the Rams to do here. So we'll do a Duclair, uh, Bertuzzi random, and then we will uh, do, because you're just missing the young end, so we'll random that off. But overall, really solid, like, some solid stuff, obviously, like the Laugh Auto 75 is wicked. The Price Shadow Box Auto is really cool. The Marchand Canvas Auto is sick. I mean, the Kachuk Button is just, it's a thick card. Like, it's a really thick card. So, uh, let me get random set up here. And we will just do, let's do the list of names for the pack. Or let's do teams for the pack. We'll do the list of teams again for the pack. And that is Bertuzzi, so Detroit Auto. And again, uh, if there are any actual shutouts in this break, I'll make sure you get something as well. So, um, as always, here we go. 
Uh, so three times this is for the overtime pack, uh, just because we were missing the young gun. So team on top gets it once, twice, third time. St. Louis, I think they were fairly quiet, I think. So Bill. Uh, and... On the uh, All-Star Skills jersey. Three times. Once. Twice. And third time. Detroit stayed on top that entire time. So there we go. Uh, I mean, honestly, fair that Detroit hit it because Ottawa cleaned up pretty good with the Stutes and Norris still. So, um, yeah, anyways, that is the break here. So, overall... Quick recap, I mean, the Marchand Canvas Auto, uh, the Ingram Patch Auto to 49, the Stutzla Retro Young Gun, the Price Shadow Box Auto to 125. Beautiful card. I'd say, like, this, um, the Laugh, the 75, and the uh, Kachuk are our top three cards. Like, fairly, fairly, fairly easily the top three. So, uh, but yeah. Thank you everyone for coming out. Um, I'll get this uploaded and yeah, have a good day. Have a good weekend. Uh, take care and I will see you next week and happy hockey card day. See ya.